Hello and welcome to another Tech Monkey Games Monkey Casting the Casters session on Forged Alliance. Today's session will be in honour of the glorious Guile returning back from his long, long, long abstinence from the game. Sorely missed, but we all understand everybody has a real life, everybody has uh, things to deal with, such as moving home, getting married and breeding seem to be uh, top of Guile's list at the moment. But he is back, he has put a lovely couple of casts up there for us, and I will put a link in the comments section below. Um, also, some of you may notice a couple of things just to cover off. You may notice that I'm not just doing Forged Lines casts here, I am also employing the skills of my wonderful uh, brother and partner in crime, Cadet. Uh, to do some casts on some other games, such as Don't Starve, Transform Ice, and we've got a couple of others in the pipeline. I'm going to be trying out a few of the free-to-play freemium games off Steam, and just generally trying to work them out and having a bit of a laugh. So let us know what you think, let us know if there's any games you'd like to see, and we'll get them covered. However, back to the game. So I'm going to be doing a 3v3 cast on Coastal Bridge. Uh, gonna slow it down a little bit here while we just cover the teams. So up in the top north, top right area of the map, we have the Glorious Guile. Glorious Guile going blue UEF. Down below him, we have Pretty going Seraphim uh, in red. We have who's that? Packstock also going Seraphim in grey. And then down on team two in the south, or on the right hand side, Nick Nick Willich going. Uh, oh, I've lost him now. He's going Cybran in purple. We have Joker going Cybran in orange, and another UEF from Nicky. Ne we'll call him Naked. 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 A uh, pretty evenly matched up game, 1300s, 1200s, 1100s, uh, team 1 at the top there probably having a slight advantage with the 1200s as well, but uh, there's not much in it to be fair. The, as we know, the rankings don't mean everything. You can be uh, a rank 1100, but if you've had 16,000 games that means you're not a very good player. Anyway, on to the action. Everybody kind of got started in the way you would expect. First land factory, some mexes, power. Uh, pack stock seems to be doing, or well, built a hell of a lot more than anybody else for some reason. I'm not quite sure how he's managed that, but he's uh, getting some scouts out, getting them down to the front. On this map you want to be trying to get to the front because there are mexes aplenty and lots of reclaim with these lovely rocks. Um, Usually starts out as a bit of a land grab for the middle, uh, followed by a bit of a uh, who can build some serious naval warfare and kill the other players. It's also a bit of a bugger for tactical missiles and artillery strikes. So we can see first battles beginning to engage here. Now I have a new headset as well, so I'm not sure if I'm just not hearing the sounds or whether I've got the game volume down too low. So let me know if that needs adjusting. And it looks like Pretty is laying claim to the middle. But Nekwilic is sending up a uh, Mantis and a scout up the left hand side to see what pack stocks there, see if he can harass any engineers. But I don't think that's going to get very far seeing as pack stocks commander is there to deal with it. And down they go. So at the moment it's looking like... oh. I was going to say that Team 1 are going to make the most of the middle, but for some reason Pretty has walked his ACU to the middle and then just sat there and now has woke up and realised that, yes, I'm meant to be doing something with that commander. Guile seems to be going for air cover. He's got his uh, first air factory up at the back there. He's got his mass extractors. There isn't a lot of mass on this map, so you definitely have to try and capture this middle. There's a bit of reclaim around the bases, rocks and trees, but that'll run out very quickly. And at that stage, it's whoever's got the middle generally that will win this. And it's looking good for Team 1 at this stage, although they're way behind in unit counts. Team 2 were doing a lot more of the spam of Mass 1. I can only assume Guile... No, I'm going to say I can only assume that Team 1 at the top are there are going 
for a T2 upgrade as soon as, but that doesn't seem to be the case. They're getting all three of their ACUs, so we're going to see a bit of an ACU war in the middle. All th six ACUs, in fact, are now in the middle. Uh, trying to grab those maxes. Still a bit of reclaim left there to be picked up. Team 1 seem to be backing away a bit, which they shouldn't be doing, I don't think. They should be focused firing one of these ACUs, picking one and getting it on because they're losing control of the middle now. Team 2 have come up with a lot more units. Got a point defence over here. And that's going to effectively push Team 1 back off the middle. Uh, and now they're uh, going to start getting some harassments up the right and left sides, it would seem. Packstock's going for a bit of a sneaky run with some zooies down the left hand side I think the zooies, yeah see I'm learning the unit names and everything uh, plenty of scouting out for team 2 so you might have a good idea of what's going on everywhere team 1 however a bit in the dark although Gail does now have a bomber sneaking down around the uh, left hand side there have a look what he's going to try and snag. Can I get those engineers? Oh, a bit of micro. A bit of micro, but doesn't get the bomb off. He needs to uh, do something with that before those interceptors wake up and come and take. Got a hell of a run by going uh, on by Nequilich. Coming up the uh, left hand side there and sneaking all the way around the back and doing some severe harassment. Taking out power for Paxtok. Niles having to divert his bombers to try and deal with the flood of units now. They don't seem to be doing a good job of shutting this down. They will do. They're not going to lose the match over this, but it's never good on this map when you're suffering these sorts of run by so early on. And you can see that they've got still got nothing at the front, and Team Two are continuing to send wave after wave pretty he's asking for assistance with his upgrade but I don't think he's going to get it looks like a good upgrade he's going for but it's only T1 the spam it's not like that's going to do any real damage to the ACU but they have taken out that run by at the north is still going to Mantis up there, whirling away on the, the Giles power now. Taking out at least two Mexes, a load of power from uh, Packstock. You see the pings going up, begging somebody to get rid of that one lone Mantis now. But it's certainly not looking good for Team 1, although saying that, I was just about to say, saying that, they do have a ton of reclaim, but Packstock's just spotted that as well. They do have an absolute metric shitload of uh, reclaim and some T2 uh, mix is going up as well now. All this lovely metal. And Team 2 again pushing with a boatload of T1 spam. Looks like they're going to potentially merge uh, Nekareth, Nekareths and Nekulich's uh, units together and push up that left hand side which is if you're going to try and T1 spam then the more the merrier so you may as well merge your units going in one combined attack instead of pushing up in separate areas and getting fought back so yeah that's exactly what they're doing now on this left hand side I'm going to have another push against Packstock see if they can take him out I'm assuming yeah, Packstock's just getting upgraded in the water there. Oh, I didn't notice, but he was very close to dying. Just under 3,000 health. Gael took a battering as well. He's on just over 6,000. As is Pradi. Well, team 2's commanders, all except Nequilich, all seem pretty healthy. Nekulich now going in the water to see if he can drop down a uh, torpedo launcher. 
take out pack stock while he's getting that upgrade on. However, I think he's going to get caught out by the fact that they, Team 1, have now fought back that incursion. Um, to all intents and purposes, anyway, there's still a couple of units at the back, but they're not going to last scales there now with a gun com, it looks like. And Nekulich... Oh, sorry, Packstock's gone for the T2 upgrade on his comm, so he'll start spamming out some Team two, T2 point defence, no doubt. And that will stop any further incursions by Team 2. <laughs> He's getting Tech 1 point defence. Sure enough that he's got a 1 T2 mass extractor. I don't think that's anything to be showing off about at nearly 9 minutes in. Although, to be fair, it doesn't look like... Yeah, I see 1... Six, 1 T2 mass extractor. Oh no. Uh, Joker's got a ton of T2 mass extractors. Actually, Joker's got a hell of an advantage in... Uh, Mass and energy, it looks like. 20 mass, 425 energy income. Gail's not too far behind. And here we have now a bit of a stalemate in the middle. Everybody beginning to go into a bit of a turtle phase of the game. That looks like a T2 upgrade for Joker as well. Team 1 trying to grab all that lovely, lovely reclaim, which will give him a real nice boost in the economy stats. I'm just looking there to see if I can work out how to switch on the uh, info about reclaim, but I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> That's an absolute terrible positioning of some point defence. Perfectly placed to never shoot anywhere except that one spot on the hill. And he's building another one next to it. That's... Oh, he was. He seems to have... Oh no, I think he is still building it. That is ridiculous. Guile's saying that we need uh, that we need some TMD, uh, which is entirely right because Team Two have attack missile launch at the back there that is going to go straight for the mass extractors, try and take out all the T2 mass extractors. And Guile just asking who's got T2. I guess that's for the uh, tactical missile defence. You can see now it's going left over to the left hand side. It's going to be going for pack stocks maxes. Except he already has the TMD up. Pack stock still trying to get the. Uh, Zooey spam going down the left hand side. I think it's uh, definitely about time he gave up on that. It's just not going to happen ever. Still no TMD on the right hand side, so this incoming missile is going to take out another mass extractor. Looks like it's going to back for Guile this time. <laughs> Guile not liking that very much. Guy must have T2 on his comm now. We'll have a look in a second as it looks like there may be a bit of an incursion coming. No, he doesn't. That he looks very unupgraded. Well, 
Well, gals, com looks very unupgraded there, um, and still no TMD on that right-hand side. That tactical missile launcher really could be doing a lot more damage. I can only assume that he's uh, not got the power to keep firing. And they now, uh, Joker's got an artillery gun up. That for some reason he was randomly firing off into the sea. And he's realised his mistake with that point defence and reclaimed it, it looks like. He's building another T2 uh, artillery installation. Which on this map I think is pretty valid tactic. This doesn't, it's a bit pointless on some maps because it'll just get overrun. It'll still get overrun on this map, but until they overrun it, it can do a hell of a lot of damage. But it seems to be having a lot of trouble hitting whatever its intended target is. Target is. And we're 12 minutes in and we've got a few T2 units on the field, but I'm not seeing a great deal of T2. I'd have expected more and possibly some early T3 shenanigans going on. There's not a lot of air, a few interceptors. Although Joker does have T2 air factory online now, which Guile is still T1. Now we have a major push by Team 2 on the right hand side, but I don't think they've got the units to uh, do it. They didn't all push together at the same time either really, they kind of single filed it up over that hill which meant they were just getting shot as soon as they uh, as soon as they crested the brow of the hill. Joker needs to be a little bit careful here because there's three ACUs very close and a lot of uh, T1 units that are all going to be pushing in now towards him. That Seraphim ACU uh, for Pretty is just ridiculously hard. Dial following in with his ACU. Joker making a run now back to the back base. You can see all that artillery, static artillery, has been taken out along with the T2 mechs and all the PD that were near there. And it's now T1's, Team 1's turn to make the push. But they don't want to make the same mistake and sit down in that little dip and try and fire up while all the other units from Team 2 stream past them. No, they've learned and they're pulling up. Joker's coming back to see if he can offer some assistance. Uh, Nekulic is making a push on the left hand side. He's seen a bit of an opening while everybody's over on the right. He's trying to push with some couple of T2 tanks. A few rhinos, Mantis up the left hand side but they've been taken out. No real worries by Packstock, who also has a s supremely hard ACU. Gowles pushing across to the left as well. We see some Renegades, some T2 gunships now coming in for Team 2, which could make all the difference here because Team 1 really don't have any air. They've got one scout plane and that's it a few uh, mobile anti-air but it's not going to be enough to take care of uh, renegades if they start pumping a lot of those out just thought uh, joker might be uh, stalling for air there uh, stalling for power Oh dear, we could be seeing the end of uh, Nekulic here, as he seems to have overextended himself a little bit and got himself into a bit of bother. Down to 700 health, that must have been very, very close because his health's been going up, so he must have been down in at the low hundreds. Uh, and he's got um, Packstock following him down the left hand side, he's also got Pradee coming in. Pretty, oh, I was going to say Pradee wants to be careful, but with a 24,500 health on his ACU, he doesn't need to worry too much at the moment. But Nekaith wants to be careful as well. That's uh, that's uh, two of Team 2's ACUs that are worryingly close, below 2,000 health. And it could be 
the Kaeth that's going down first. He's down at 700, 600, 500, 300, 200. <laughs> oh, down he goes. Down he goes. Taken out. He just couldn't stop the onslaught of Pretty's ACU just following him constantly and firing. Packstock had also built some T1 uh, torpedo launchers to the north. I think they may have actually got the kill. Well, it's Packstock's call that's jumped, so yeah, it was Packstock who's uh, taking him out. And they're now going to close in on Nekulich, and there's going to be very little he can do about it, I don't, don't think. He does have some T2 point defence whaling away on Pradi, but with that upgraded ACU, it's not really having any effect. His health's neither going up nor down, it's kind of staying around 20,000. See what that chat's about. Nothing important. Dancing lessons or something. Seem to be chatting about. And Gael now with some of his own T2 units pushing down the right hand side, trying to come around the back of Joker's bay. And Pradee here trying to get some uh, torpedo launchers up. To stop. Nekulich getting his health back, but. Taken out by the T2 point defence, and now. Oh, this must be the dancing lesson they were just talking about. So they'll be just walking around in circles around each other. Must be having trouble getting some build orders down. Oh, he's trying to nudge him back out of the water, I think. <laughs> That's just cheeky. But Packstock pointed out that he's just put some T down some T2 uh, torpedoes. And that will surely be the end of Nekulich. You can see them now opening up a world of hurt. 1500 health. Yeah. Each time those torpedoes come in, it knocks another three or 400 health off, it seems. Or 500 even. And that's it. One more round of that, and it could be it's all game over, I think. 200 health. Boom. Boom. And there we go. We have rid of rid of Pretty as well. Uh, sorry, rid of Nekulich as well. So, unless Joker pulls out something amazing here, I think it's the writing's on the walls, it's a win for the mighty Guile and Team One. Uh, and Guile now sending in those T two tanks to deal with Joker's power. And he's going for the air factory, which seems like a bit of a a bit of a waste. Be using those tanks to take out the power. Oh, he's changed his targeting now, and you can see those T2 point defence at the front of Joker's base are a waste of time. There are is a T2 bomber out, but that's been chased down by an interceptor. Now keeps needs to keep those tanks moving. Doesn't want to sit still and let those bombers take it out. And then the seriously overpowered ACU of Pradi coming in from the left hand side means this game is definitely all over. You can see how strong that Seraphim ACU is. That's four T2 point defence fighting at him there, and he's struggling to lose any energy at all. Whereas Joker's is rapidly uh, shedding health. Joker down to 11,000, 10,000. Pretty still at 21,000. Actually going up a little bit still. I think Joker, yeah, I was going to say Joker must be accepting his fate now and he's just called out the GG. The game is over. There's too many units and he's quit. Control K, Alt F forward. Uh, and that seems to be the game. Guile wins. That's what you want on your first casting the caster session is Guile wins. I never understand why Guile wins or why how it chooses who wins, considering Guile is not at the top of the scoreboard. But either way, a great game, a little bit of a desync at the end there, but I don't think it affected the game too much.
Um, thanks for watching. I would love some feedback on these videos. I realise I'm not the best caster, but I'm trying. Uh, if you can watch some of our other games as well, let us know what you think, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of, what you'd like to hear more of, and what you'd like to hear less of, which is probably me. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Click like, click subscribe, all the usual bits and pieces. Thanks. Have a good evening.